Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode 17 of the Brighter Horizons podcast. My name is Akita. We are here today to talk about today, today, today to talk about how to deal with sadness. And you know what? As always, we're going to keep a positive attitude throughout this episode because one thing that we're going to talk about later is it's important to know that just because you're talking about something negative doesn't mean you have to look at it negatively. But for starters, let's take a look at this camera angle real quick. First of all, new shelf, baby. New shelf. Looking pretty nice. I mean, if you guys have suggestions for how to spruce up the room. How about you let me explain it? Because like, they're probably looking at a still frame of me just sitting here. You know so, what? You're right. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. So, guys, as you can see, new shelf, as he said before. But I think the plan is we're going to toss up a new two books and car every single day. Or maybe we put up a watch. Maybe put up some other miscellaneous type of thing. It'll probably be book recommendations for you guys. That's going to be the main focus of this shelf. Maybe we'll toss up a poster. If you guys have recommendations of what we should put up there, just let us know. Drop it in the comments below. And we will, you know, change the episodes. Because mm -hmm. we've talked about change. It's very important to embrace change and not be so rigid in your ways. Similarly, sometimes you just got to change up the attitude and vibe of your studio. You know, spruce it up a little bit. 100%. Last thing before we get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to our third member of the podcast. Welcome. Mike. He kept on apologizing in every episode saying, oops, sorry, Mike, every time he hit it. So now his name is Mike. If you have any recommendations for what to name this guy, actually, you know what? No, we'll come up with a name within the next couple episodes. Eventually, I'll hit this guy and then we'll, we'll see what vibes. But anyways, let's get into it. So how to deal with sadness. For starters, the first thing I thought is, why do we feel sad in the first place? I mean, as humans, why do we feel negative emotions? Now, obviously, you can look at it the natural way of, oh, it means some sort of imbalance in your life or there's some something that's bothering you. And people tend to look at things very literally often. So let's step away from the literalness and just look at the most simple example. Either we lose something or we don't get something. That's what it is. So either losing something we have or not getting something that we don't yet have. Okay. So let's start with losing something. You go ahead. How do you believe that losing something can affect somebody negatively? Well, I feel like it definitely creates a void because we're all like puzzle pieces of what we consider to own or parts of our identity, whatever, is all like a puzzle, I think. We're all like our soul might, is, a, is like a big jigsaw puzzle. So when a part of your identity or your soul is like, ripped out, it leaves a missing space there. And oftentimes that empty void is a very painful thing. Because what once was there is no longer there. So you'll look at your own soul or your own, you know, reflection and feel like a part of you is missing. Even though these things aren't intrinsically connected to you, you feel as though you and they are one. So when that puzzle piece is gone, you feel that emptiness. You feel that sorrow and you feel the longing to get it back. Mm -hmm. And like the greatest example of losing something is losing a loved one or losing a job, losing a relationship. Those are the three that most people think about when thinking about loss. It doesn't feel good to lose these things, obviously, because you had something something so great, and now it's gone. That's one of the worst feelings in the world. But it doesn't have to be that way, again, which we'll get into, which will be how to deal with it. But now, let's look at the other reason why people tend to get upset or sad about things. It's because you don't get something you worked for. You don't earn something. That also feels like loss because you put in all this effort and yet nothing came of it. For example, being a business owner. Sometimes it's difficult. You'll work for months, not receive anything. So how do you combat that? How do you get over that? There's a lot of different ways to do it. But first and foremost is just to have patience, just to understand that rainy days will pass. The same way that your good days pass, rainy days pass too. It doesn't matter how you feel at the end of the day. It's going to be gone. The next day will come and everything will be fine. So the other thing I'd like to say before we continue on is, like I said in the intro, just because something is negative inherently doesn't mean that every conversation regarding it needs to be bad. And I think that that's one of the things that makes sadness so difficult to combat because we, glor not glorify, but we make it bigger than it is. We make it sound so terrible, such a daunting thing to talk about, such a dark topic. 
you don't want to get into it. Your mind instantly avoids it because it's scary. You don't feel like talking about sadness because it makes you feel bad. But by talking about it, you take away the power that you give it. Because at the end of the day, everything in this world, like we always say, is only as powerful as you let it be, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's really just the eyes of the beholder. It's perspective. How you see it is how it really is. So sadness is the same way. The more you say, oh, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. The worse it gets. But the more you sit here and say, hey, you know what? Bad things happen. That's okay. The less it affects you. So learn to be able to discuss sadness. Learn to be able to discuss the negative emotions. And that will help you take away a lot of the power that it has over you. And one thing I wanted to connect what you said to was about giving things value. It's such a predominant thing in our society like to just say that arbitrarily things have so much value over us that we're willing to sacrifice our emotions for it. Like, for example, it was actually in a Ryan Higa video where he talks about award shows. And he says that the Oscars, for example, all these people are, you know, putting all this weight on Oscars as if they're the greatest thing ever. But what he said was, think about all the Leonardo DiCaprio fans out there. Do you think that once he got an Oscar, they thought now he's a good actor? Because the truth was, he's the exact same actor as he was before he got the Oscar. So regardless of whether he had it or not, he was still a phenomenal actor. That didn't change his skill level. It didn't make him a better actor. It's just that now in the eyes of the public, because he's won this award, now he's a good actor. But is that really fair? He's been a great actor through and through. Just because he hadn't won an Oscar for the longest time doesn't mean that he's not a good actor or he wasn't a good actor before that. People say oh, constantly, oh, he's getting snubbed, he's getting snubbed. If that's the truth, then it doesn't matter. Because in the end, he's still the one of the greats. It doesn't matter whether they won the award or not. Same thing with Travis Scott. I was about I to it. say that. I saw oh the look on your God. face. Oh I my saw God. the look on your face and I knew it. I knew it. Because same thing, this guy got nominated, what, 10 times, still hasn't won a Grammy? Yeah. But does that make people think he's less of an artist than he is? No, absolutely not. Exactly. So all these things that we assign such big value to don't really mean anything. Because we're just letting it dictate our image of this person. But in reality, that image is unchanged. Mm -hmm. It's still the same thing. That's insane. That's insane. Because I was just thinking, man, that's perfect. That's literally Travis Scott. And the second my eyes lit up, you were like, hey. Yeah, exactly. I know yeah. exactly what you're going to say. It's, it's really unfortunate. And... As an artist, I think, and as a person in general, when you work towards something, like we said in the last episode, the more, was it the last episode? I think so. The more you are happy with your own progress, the less you need other people to approve of it. Mm -hmm. So, the, yeah, getting an Oscar is nice. Winning a Grammy is nice. But if you're happy with your own progress, if you know that you deserved it and you lost it, yeah, it might sting a little bit. But at the end of the day, you determine how much that little bit is. Exactly. You know, like it doesn't have to suck. At the end of the day, you could just move on. And that's the beauty of emotion is that it doesn't have to be sitting here forever. You can get over it. Just like David Goggins. Can't hurt me. Mm -hmm. No matter what happens, he keeps moving. And honestly, I think that running actually really provides that perspective. It's a really mm -hmm. nice thing to clear your head. I just realized because yesterday I got into running a little bit more because unfortunately I messed up my wrist a week ago and I haven't been able to work out since and it has been a very sad week and so I had to apply some of my own advice and look for a positive. Now that I'm not lifting the weights at the moment, I should find something else to do for a workout. So I ran two miles yesterday. Yeah, it's not insane, but just wanted to get a light sweat in. It was pretty nice and mm -hmm. honestly, I just sat there and I just ran and ran and as the steps kept going up, I didn't really think about anything. I was just kind of sitting there, well, moving there. It just felt very peaceful. And honestly, I might start my days with a run now just because of how good it makes me feel. And that's one big thing to know if you're feeling sad about something is, yeah, your wrist might be messed up, but your legs still work. So mm. learn to use what you have Love that. and make a good experience. That's such a great quote that your wrist might be messed up, but your legs still work because there's always going to be something wrong with your life. Mm -hmm. right? There's no perfect life. I know we all think a celebrity is living this perfect life, but I guarantee you they have their own stresses. I was talking to one of my friends about money, 
I mean, you're talking about why, like, you know, why do we want to be successful? Why do we want to reach financial freedom? And he told me how life would be so much less stressful with money. And I agreed. I did agree. Because I think that with money comes uh, less worries about small things. But what I told him is that when these old stresses go, not knowing whether you're going to be able to put food on the table or pay your electricity bill, new stresses will arise. Now, I'm not saying that you can even compare the two, the stresses of Elon Musk versus the stresses of somebody who can barely afford to put food, to put food on the table. I don't know why I'm stuttering so Bro, much. No, it's funny, but, though, because even me, I've like kind of lost my flow a little bit. Even yeah. that intro was a little choppy. I was like, ah, what's going on today? Sad. But I can tell you that for sure, the person who's struggling to eat is going to have a lot harder time living their life. They're going to deal with more stress. But to believe that money is going to take away that stress is foolish. There will always be problems in your life. That's not, that's real. That's the real world, right? Nobody gets to live a perfect life. But to be able to look past those imperfect things and find a, perf- a seamlessly perfect life is far more beautiful. And actually, it's a quote I want to say. Let me quickly find it. Okay. And the quote goes, it is ordinary to love the beautiful, but it is beautiful to love the ordinary. Damn, and I don't know that. where I got it. I just saw it once and I wrote it down. I don't mm-hmm. remember exactly where it was. But I love that quote because it's so easy for us to all love the great, beautiful things. Like, you know, the new uh, Lamborghini Countach or to love the new Rolex or, you know, to love all to love the nicest flower. But it's extremely hard to just love a leaf or to love the Toyota Camry that gets us to work every day, or to love the job that puts food on our table. It's hard to love those things because it seems like everyone has it. But you never reflect on why that's so important in your life, how much happiness that brings to you. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. think about the ordinary things in your life and think about how happy those things can make you. Because once you see beauty in the ordinary, you find yourself a lot happier. Because instead of looking at, oh my God, I need a million dollars to be happy. Now it's, dude, what I've got is making me so happy. That's that's crazy. And the thing Mm -hmm. is, another thing you really need to think about when you're sad is to have perspective. We always say because we're Sri Lankan. Now, I actually didn't want to say that because I wanted to gain a large following. And then one day when people start making assumptions, I'll be like, hey, we're not even from India. Like get absolutely roasted, buddy. But I mean, I guess we still don't have that many followers, so it's fine. But one day, one day I'll make the same claim. And you guys who saw it here will know that I told you guys first. But anyways, we're from Sri Lanka. So when you go back home, not just here, but a lot of places in Asia, you'll see the poverty that a lot of people live in. And when you see that perspective, you gain that knowledge of what other people go through on a day-to-day basis, it really makes you realize how fortunate we are. Like you said, the stresses of Elon Musk and the guy who can't put food on the table are incomparable. But if Elon had that perspective of, hey, there are people out there who starve, and I'm sure he does, he'll know that his life is not so bad. Because, yeah, sure, he's got a lot of stress. He's got a lot of things to reach, a lot of people's expectations to meet. But he understands that he doesn't have to deal with the stress of having to put food on the table, have a roof over his head that isn't leaking. You know that clip of, I believe it's Shannon Sharp. You know who that is? Okay, well, Shannon Sharp used to be a football player. Very tall guy with glasses. And he has his, I think he has a podcast, I think. And he was giving a speech somewhere. And he said, you know, one day I told my mom that I was going to make it big. And when I made it big, I asked her, what do you want? And she said, you know, son, I want I want a Mercedes. And so he went and bought her a Mercedes Benz. Then he kept on buying people close to him things that they wanted. He finally made it big. He was playing, did I say basketball or football? Football. Yeah, okay, good. He was playing football, and he finally started buying people things. So he bought his mom a Mercedes-Benz. He bought his dad something, his brother something, whatever. And then he asked his grandma, Grandma, what do you want? I finally made it big. I got money now. I'm an NFL player. I can get you anything you want. Do you want a fancy car? Do you want fancy jewelry? I can do anything you want. And she said, you know, son, there's only one thing I want, and that is I want a home with a roof that doesn't leak. 
one where I don't have to worry about water dripping through and getting my feet wet while I sleep. And to him, that was an eye-opening moment because he realized some people have experienced such lows that even an average life would be a high for them. So to have that perspective and understand, hey, my life is not so bad. There are people out there with holes in their roof. They, don't, they have to worry about keeping their feet close to the middle of the bed so that they don't get wet. Understand that and realize your life is not so bad. You got a lot of things to be happy about, man. And when you look at it that way, life is pretty good. Life is pretty good. Like today, for example, I woke up. The first thing I looked at was I looked out the window. It was a bit cloudy. I was like, man, it's cloudy. You know what? It's still going to be a good day. Within an hour, the sun came out. I felt all my energy restored. I was happy. Let the little things make you happy. Yeah. That's how you deal with sadness. Is if you're always smiling and happy about the little things, those little inconveniences don't bother you so much. I think one thing about our society that really makes me sad is we almost glorify sadness. Like it's so common in today's society and nobody says anything about it. Like nobody speaks about how positive your life really should be, how important it is to provide positivity. Because I think a lot of people are scared to be positive. Why is it cringe to be a happy person nowadays, right? A lot of the time when all these people go around smiling, they just get judged for the way that they are. And when people succeed, everybody around them is trying to pull them down. We've created a culture where people want to pull each other down just so they can feel like they're higher up. But instead, all you're doing is dragging yourselves all down the same ladder. And it's from, I have a bit of a monologue to read here from Coach Carter. Okay. And first off, goat movies. I was so about such to a say, great movie. Coach Carter is one of the best movies yeah. I have ever watched. I don't watch a lot of movies, mm. but Coach Carter I've watched several times and it sticks with me. So yeah. if you haven't watched Coach Carter, go and watch it. Great movie. Great movie. But the quote or monologue goes, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. It's not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our own lights shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. And this is also, this quote is originally from a book of Return to Love, Reflections on the Principles of a Course in Miracles by Miss Marianne. How did you know that? What do you mean? Like, how did you know it was from a book? I thought oh, it was no, from I the saw movie. S- somebody said that, like, that's where it's from. And also, I think that's where, I don't remember the movie well enough to remember exactly why the guy said it, but I knew that it was from a book. Interesting, okay. And I found it. But that idea, that being positive yourself is what leads to other people being positive. It's something that we've discussed so many times. But in society, it's like we discourage it. People aren't made to stand out anymore. Why are so many kids afraid of putting their hand up in class, even when they know the right answer? Because they're either afraid of being a smart, nerdy kid, or they're afraid of being wrong. So either way, people are afraid to succeed, or they're afraid to fail. But the worst thing is that they're too afraid to try. And if our school is taught that instead, just try. Like I wish a teacher would say, it's fine if you get an answer wrong. Just say what's on your mind. I guarantee you that random kid at the back of the class that everyone thinks is an idiot probably has the right answer written down. He's just too afraid to say it. Either out of the fear of sounding like a nerd or the fear of being wrong. And that's what's molding the children of today, is a fear. Oh my God, that is crazy. That's probably one of the best examples I've heard you use Mm. on this podcast. That was crazy because it's so true. Everybody who's been through school lately knows that when a teacher asks a question, nobody wants to answer. Mm -hmm. There's like maybe one or two people who have the answer. And if they're consistently answering questions, you know what else people call them? A teacher's pet. Yeah. Say, oh, you're just sucking up to the teacher so you get a good grade. No, I'm just actively learning. I'm just Mm -hmm. answering the question. I'm just giving my opinion. All of a sudden, we've made it uncool to try in school. We've made it uncool to care about anything. Now people just want to be nihilistic and just say, 
nothing matters, life is boring, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to be monotone, sad, and boring forever. Yeah, and for example, we were actually talking about this on a car ride, and we were talking about a lot of the kids nowadays that, you know, act like they're in gangs and stuff when they're in grade 8. And it's not something that makes me angry so much as something that makes me sad. Because I don't think these people understand that the people that are from, like, real hoods, real gangs, are only there because they're in the worst circumstances. I guarantee you, you take any of those guys and you said, hey, you could have a normal house, a normal education, a normal life. You could have been fine. Every single one of them would have snapped instantly and been like, please. They were born to a bad life. And you mean to tell me that people were given a great one and chose to throw it away for that? You kids are being given a free, a nearly free education here in Canada. And you mean to tell me you want to throw it away? I guarantee you 90% of the people that wish they were in your shoes would take that chance and take it so far. You've been given an opportunity. Are you really going to let, are you really going to let yourself throw that away? Because you want to seem like you're someone you're not? Why are you concerned with what everybody else is thinking of you? Why do you want to put up a facade to be like, I'm this super tough guy, you know, I'm so gangster. Let me wear my shiesty and my puffer jacket. <laughs> now, I'm not calling you out if you're wearing a shiesty or a puffer jacket. It's just a demographic. And it's why. Would you wake up in the mirror, you, uh, you know, pull out your vape, and you mean to tell me you seem happy doing that? But then you go around your whole day frowning, looking angry. I guarantee you half those guys, when they go home, they take their stuff off and they smile. But they're too afraid to show that at school. Because it's not cool anymore. Or it's not, you know, it's lame. Why is it lame to be happy? What has our society really done to people that they can't show how happy they are? Why does our society enforce that if you're depressed, there's nothing you can do about it but take pills? Now, I'm not saying that there aren't diagnoses for that, but there's ways to go around it, ways to do it yourself, ways to fix your life without the pills. Let me ask you something. Hmm. When our pipes burst, whether it was a plumbing issue or let's say an electrical issue or something broke around the house, what did our father do? Did he call somebody and say, hey, I have no idea what's going on. Please come help me. No. What did he do? He always looked at it and tried to find a way to do it himself. Well, he looked on YouTube if he really didn't know, but 90% <laughs> of the time he figured it out himself. And that's why I'm really proud of him because he inspires me. Yeah. He tells me, hey, you don't need other people to come in and solve your issues for you. You can figure it out. You don't need a professional plumber. Now, that doesn't mean try and do everything on your own and wire your entire house. I mean, if you have that experience, go ahead. But if, it, if it's a small job, something minor, an inconvenience, a short circuit, something like that, you can probably figure that out. So if that applies to plumbing, electrical work, carpent, carpenting? No. Carpentry. Carpentry. There it is. Yeah, well, Carpentry. Why can't you apply that to your emotional state? Arguably, that's more important because that's something you control entirely. Mm -hmm. It's entirely internal. All this electrical plumbing stuff is outside your own body and mind. But your emotions your mental health, that's all inside. Now, depression is a slightly different topic of sadness, which I've learned over the past couple of months as I researched this topic a little more. But in terms of sadness, pills are not going to solve your problem. I'll tell you that right away. 90% of the time, it won't. Like we talked about last episode, do you remember I mentioned Carl Jung, that psychiatrist? Yeah. Yeah. He said that a third of his patients all time who claimed to have mental disorders didn't have anything. It was just that... They didn't have a purpose in life. So that's another big way to deal with sadness is to find something to dedicate your time to. Every day when you come downstairs, what do you do? Me? Yeah, you, when specifically. I eat breakfast. Okay, what I, else? Well, usually in the mornings I go to the gym. Yeah. And I play table tennis. Okay. Come home, eat, play the drums. Then... That's your morning done. Yeah. So think about that. In your morning already, you've gone to the gym, played ping pong, and played hey, the drums. Hey, hey. Played table tennis. Apologies. Played table tennis and played the drums. Those are three different hobbies right there you dedicated to your time to. Now tell me, on all of those days, how where you did all three of those things, have you ever felt sad? 
Never. Now tell me, what was the one day you felt sad? Today. And why was that? I missed the gym. Boom. I have to admit, that is pretty crazy. I did feel really bad today. Exactly. I was really sad today. I'm not going to lie. I kind of broke You worked me. late. You slept late. Didn't get that much rest. Didn't even eat dinner yesterday. So you were tired and didn't have the energy to go to the gym this morning. You didn't even wake up. Okay. You felt so bad about that. And that was the only reason you were sad. Every other day where you did these things, you were fine. But the one day you missed it, it sucked. So now imagine missing that every single day. Maybe that's why you're sad. Maybe it's not that your girlfriend left you or that you lost a job. Maybe it's just that you need to dedicate that energy to something more important, something different, something that calls you in a way that none of those things did before. And that's what last episode was all about. Yeah. So if you want to learn more about that, definitely go and check that out. And it's crazy because I actually wanted, I had this written in my notes to connect it back to last episode because remember the jigsaw analogy that I brought. This is kind of weird because I bring a thought and I connect it to another thought I had during the episode. Like I didn't think of the jigsaw puzzle thing before the episode, but I thought about it after we started the episode and now I'm bringing an idea from before the episode to that idea. Okay. Did that make sense? Okay, yes, yeah. yes. It's pretty crazy, but with the jigsaw analogy, I feel like one part that people often miss is your purpose. And purpose, I think, is less of a piece as it is a lens. It's a lens on how you view yourself. Once you see, I, like for example, suppose you want to run a marathon. Let's say that's your purpose, okay? Once you figure that out, you put on a lens of I'm a marathon runner. You see yourself in the future of I want to be a marathon runner. So now you're like, now you see your flaws. You're like, hey, I can't really run that much. What do I need to do? Oh, my diet's not great. I need to do this. How can I take care of myself better? So now you see your flaws. And when you leave those flaws, that's where you feel pain. Once you found your purpose and you don't actively take steps towards it, I think that's when it hurts the most. But someone who never finds their purpose is looking through a blurry lens. And through that blurry lens, what imperfection can you find? None. In the same way, you can find no perfection either. You cannot find happiness without seeing the sadness. That's the true thing about life, is that once you turn on that clear lens, yes, you're going to see all the beautiful things, but so you will also see the very painful ones. So I find that it is more painful to find your purpose and not chase it than to never find your purpose at all. But by finding your purpose, you also get to view the true beauties in your life. Once you really see, hey, I've got, like, this is where I want to go, but this is also what's behind me, now you feel more grateful for what you have because you have a clearer vision of who you are. So now you see all those holes in the jigsaw puzzle of your soul. And with those, you can find the missing pieces of your identity. Damn, that is so true. And also, when you think about a lens, that can also connect really well with sadness because if you think about it, Sadness is the way you look at it. So now if you are looking at things with this blue tint, just like you said about Picasso many, many episodes ago, look at things in that way, of course, it's going to suck. And also, the way you identify with your emotions is important. Think about it. You said that when you're training to become an athlete, you put on the lens that I am an athlete. I am a runner. I am a swimmer. I am a soccer player. If you say, I am sad, what does that tell you? You're identifying with it. You're making it a part of you. Instead of saying, I feel sad, you say, I am sad. That's the interesting thing about the English language is the way we say things can have a very profound meaning. A lot of other languages say, like direct translation for I'm sad is I have sadness. That's what a lot of other languages, the way they say it. And the way we say it is, I am sad. Why do we say I am sad, not I feel sad or I have sadness today? Something like that. Yeah, it sounds weird in English, but if you were to say that, it kind of distances it a little bit from you. It doesn't say it's something inside here that's plaguing me and I can't get rid of it. No. Sadness is not something that is in here or up here. It's just something that comes and goes. It's not going to be attached to you forever. The question is, are you going to keep it attached to you forever? It's yeah. something you have to cut off. It's like dragging a boulder behind you. That rope isn't connected to you, but you constantly pull it. All you need to do is learn how to let go. That boulder is a representation of your grief, your trauma, your regrets, all those past mistakes that you hate. 
let go. Learn to let go. And learn to love those mistakes because they've shaped who you are. That boulder that you dragged made you a lot stronger than who you were before you had it, right? Mistakes are such an important thing. And there's a quote, and it goes, if you went back in time and fixed all your mistakes, you would erase yourself because you are built by those mistakes. And this is from a Instagram channel, channel, account, account. Yeah. I don't know why I said channel. That's weird. But Instagram account called the uh, grandpa's tea shop. And it's like a, Oh yeah. The I wrote based one, yeah. quote and I love it. We'll toss it up here for you guys. It's super uh, inspirational. They talk a lot about positivity. So I suggest you guys all go and check that out. But Mistakes make you grow. Mistakes are your friend. They do help you. But the truth is you need to let go of your mistakes. You need to understand that they're in the past. They've helped you grow, but they need to leave too. Similarly, sadness is an emotion that helps you grow because you learn now. Like if you took somebody and they never experienced sadness, they would never understand what happiness is either. Right? To understand the peak, you need to know of the valley. So when you experience sadness, you've opened yourself up to feeling new happiness. So it's like a, it's a double-edged sword and you need to know or be careful about which edge you're focusing on. That was freaking great. That was goaded. And also another thing that I was thinking about is like we've said before, like you were saying, double-edged sword. On one side, you have happiness. On the other side, you have sadness. So don't you think that learning to see the beauty in everything will help you negate a lot of the damage or sadness that you experience on a day-to-day -day basis. There's that overused analogy, but I'll say it here for those of you that don't know. Every day, imagine that you wake up, you look at your bank account, there's $86,400 in that bank account. Now, by the end of the day, that 86,000 is gone. And the next day you're given a new 86,000. So you can spend that however you want. Now imagine that somebody steals $10 from you. Would you cry about that $10 and waste the other 86,390? Would you not spend it at all because, oh man, that guy stole $10 from me. It's the end of the world. Would you sit here and wallow in despair? No, you'd go out and use the rest of it. So why do you let 10 seconds of a negative interaction take away from the 86,400 seconds you have in a day? Why? You have been given so much. Why let a little thing take away? Instead, focus on what you have and what you lost doesn't seem so bad. And that's, yeah. that's, that's the truth about yeah. life. You don't need to be focused on what you lost. You got to focus on the things you have. Learn to see the beauty in everything, especially the little things. And as you talked about an Instagram account, it made me think about something. Something that happened today when I was driving to go run an errand. Right before I left, I checked the Instagram account. You know, we have 80 followers on Instagram, 81 or something like that. We have 83 followers on TikTok and 133 subscribers on YouTube. Do you know how many accounts we've reached on our Instagram account? No idea. 10,600. We've reached, and that's in the 30, past 30 days. In the past month, we've reached 10,600 people. Hmm. So obviously I can sit here and compare that to Mr. Beast and his millions and millions of people that he reaches every single day. But to me, I don't look at that. I look at the fact that, hey, I'm just a guy and I've made a difference in 10,000 people's lives. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, That's absolutely insane. Or the 133 people here who are subscribed to our channel. We make a difference in every single one of their lives every single week or every single day if they watch the shorts. <laughs> Those little things make me so happy. Just like the way I look outside, I see the sun, I feel happy. Or when I see a grade increase at school, I feel happy. All these little things make me so much happier. But then, of course, comes the other side. What happens when we start to lose those things? For example, I had to go a little bit inconsistent with the video uploads for a bit. I went three days without posting a short. That was the longest period of time I haven't posted a short form video in almost the history of this channel, I think. And we also were late to upload last week's episode. Sorry about that, guys. But the reason for that is I had midterms. I was studying really hard and I dedicated a lot of time to that. So I didn't have time to sit and record and edit the podcast and all that. And obviously that made me feel bad. And not to mention, just because I didn't upload those three days, you know what happened? The last three TikToks I uploaded completely tanked. 
They didn't make it on the For You page. So all of them are at like one, six, 30 views as opposed to our usual 400 to 600 range. So that bothered me a lot at first. But then I thought, you know what? There's a couple of bad apples in the bunch. But that's okay because I still have a basket full of good ones. That's great because I was literally about to say that as I was this morning, actually, I opened up our TikTok to check, like, you know, the views and stuff and see comments and view it because although you handle the socials, I do like to check it out from time to time. And I opened it up and I saw, like, one of our pinned videos had, like, 7,000 views. And then I looked at the next one and it had, like, 400. And at first I was like, damn, that video did really good. This one's not so much. But then I looked and I saw one with six views. And I was like, well, it did a hell of a lot better than this one. <laughs> so to understand that I can still smile about 400 views because there were days when we got zero is what makes me really happy. To see that, yeah, maybe Mr. Beast does have a, a 200 million subscribers and I don't even have 200. I'm glad to see that I have more than when we started. Right? We started at zero. It was, it's a hell of a lot happier to see that number keep going up regardless of whether it's not where it could be or whether it's not up to par with what everybody else thinks. You think when I see all these people posting garbage content, making th- getting thousands, millions of views, I feel like at first I think, damn, really? Maybe I should start doing this. Maybe I should just start putting up stuff like that. But then I think what I'm doing isn't for that. It's not that reason. So why am I comparing myself to these people? In the same way, If you're trying to be an engineer, why are you looking at Mark Zuckerberg? Who cares how much money he's making? That's not what your dream is. So why are you trying to chase that? Why are you fixated on what he's doing when it has nothing to do with you? Find a role model, yes, but don't be so fixated on what they did. I see David Goggins as a big role model for me because he's such a hard worker. But I don't want to be in the Navy. I don't want to be a Marine. I don't want to be an ultra marathon runner. Yeah, you don't want to run until your feet fall off. Yeah. So why I'm not going to sit here and be like, damn, when David Goggins was this age, this is what he was doing. What am I doing with my life? That's not who I want to be. Sure, he's a good person to look up to. A good bar to see. But it's not the bar that I want to be at. And these bars aren't comparable. To say that I'm less successful than Elon Musk just because I don't have as much money as him isn't fair. Because the metric of success is arbitrary. It's not... The same for everybody. Success isn't just making a million dollars. You could say financial success, yes, making the most amount of money, sure. But life success is not about money. It's about you. It's about did you find your purpose? Did you put in the work? And did you end your life happy? And did you leave a positive imprint on this world? And those aren't comparable. You can't sit here and compare one person's success and their purpose to another's. It's not fair. Because it's different for everybody. It's like saying that one person did well on an exam and another person didn't when you have two completely, when you're studying two different topics. Especially when those topics aren't even able to be marked on the same grade schedule, right? These are all different things. All of our purposes are different. So don't be sad when you don't hit somebody else's bar because that's not the target you're aiming for. Why spend your whole life climbing the wrong mountain? Damn, that's that's crazy. And also when you talked about Elon Musk, One thing I thought about is, again, this is not hating in any way because, of course, financial success. This guy is leagues upon leagues ahead of all of us. So I can't sit here and say, yeah, Elon Musk is not that successful. You know, he's all right. I'm definitely better than Elon Musk. No, that's not what I'm saying. But compare Elon Musk financially to me. Of course, he's way better than me. But compare Elon Musk's health to me. In terms of physical fitness, you don't see Elon working out. Why? Because he doesn't have the time. He's too busy managing his several companies, trying to please shareholders. Hell, it's not working right now, but (laughs) he's trying, and he's trying to innovate. He's trying to do something that aligns with his purpose. Now, to me, trying to please shareholders, trying to come up with a new model of a car or space shuttle, exploration, exploration, some new campaign, those kinds of things aren't that important to me. You know what is important to me? Getting in the gym, getting a workout in, being able to bench new weights. That's what makes me feel good, what makes me feel happy about my day-to-day life. So to sit here and compare myself to Elon and say, my God, I don't have a billion dollars, I'm not successful. Mm -hmm. What the hell am I doing? Elon had already started a company and bought a McLaren F1 at my age. What am I doing, man? Why am I comparing myself? I don't have to. And as always, there's that quote. Too overused to put as a quote of the week, 
but I'll put it here. Comparison is the thief of joy. Hmm. As that's you, a great quote. Have you never I've heard never this? I've never heard that. Wow, that's crazy. But comparison is the thief of joy. While you sit here and compare your own shortcomings or successes to somebody else's, you rob yourself of the beauty of your own life. You rob yourself of the true story of your successes. Why would you do that? You have so many great things about you. Yes, you, I'm looking at you. You have some things that I would be jealous of that anybody else here would be proud to see. And yet, you shadow it with other people's greatness. Why do you do that? That's what makes people feel sad on a day-to-day basis. You hop on Instagram and you see, oh my God, Stradman bought a new car. Or Mr. Beast has a new video where he has a Bugatti or the first car ever made. All these rich people things. And you feel bad about your own life. But maybe ask yourself, do I really want to be in the same position as Mr. Beast where I have to do something every single week for 200 million people or else I disappoint them and I look Mm -hmm. like a bad person? Probably not a good idea. You don't want to look like a bad person in front of 200 million people. You don't want that responsibility. So why are you looking for the same success that he has? You want your own success. Take your own path. Be happy about your own successes and learn to fix your own problems. Yeah. One thing that like connects to this, and I it's in my life, but I'm very ashamed of it, was the other day. It was about uh, two, maybe three weeks ago. I was sitting with one of my friends, and he's like, we were just talking about our days, and he was like, yeah, I'm going out to dinner tonight with one of my friends. I, like Him and his friends were going out. And I was like, oh, like what for? Like, was it an occasion? He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He got accepted to SFU. And at first, I sat there, and I was just like, because to me, it wasn't a big accomplishment. Like, I got accepted, and I sat there, and I was just like, okay. Like, it was a safety. Or, well, not a safety, but it was like a, it wasn't an out there option for me. And at first, I was like, is that really something that big to celebrate? And I was really uh, sad that I said this. Like You said back, that to I, him? Well, yeah, not to the actual guy, but, but the to per- my friend. Your friend, okay, okay. And I felt really, I felt really bad about it, because then I was like, because I always thought, you know, I want to go to, you know, UBC, Solder School of Business. That's really pretty hard to get into. So at the time, that was my goal, and I compared his to mine, and I said, well, I guess it's not that crazy. Then I go into my English class, and one of these guys I sit next to, maybe if you watch this episode, he knows who he is, one of the smartest people I've ever met. And I say, like, you know, I really wish I got into UBC. This guy's already been accepted to UBC. Really? Oh, yeah, okay. like Somehow, a while ago he I'm got I'm not it. surprised, yeah. And he's like, I don't remember what university it was. Maybe it was, oh, it was Waterloo. And he was like, I really want to get into Waterloo. And I was just like, dude, that's just so crazy. Like, I'd celebrate so much if I got into UBC. He didn't celebrate at all when he got into UBC. So I thought about it, and I was like, damn. To each of us, our own benchmarks are different. He feels as though he won't succeed until he gets into Waterloo. I feel as if I won't succeed until I get into UBC. And my friend's friend didn't think he would succeed until he got to SFU. Yet, in each of our own ways... If we got into each of those things, we would all be so happy. So just because you didn't hit yet, just because you didn't hit someone else's benchmark doesn't mean that you should be sad. Because right there, right there, I saw it. Like that was so apparent to me. I was like, I look down on this guy and I'm so ashamed that I did just to realize that I I am that guy. To somebody else out there, I am that guy. And... To me, just getting that step is so important. You think that if you, like in your shoes, imagine if you could bench 225. Right? It's such I'm a big accomplishment. Yeah. I am very close. But it's such a big accomplishment for a lot of people. But would you be sad because you can't bench 500 pounds? Hell no. That's ridiculous yeah. if I were to look at it that Are way. Are you sad that you can't bench as much as Eddie Hall? Nope. Exactly. Because he's not you. But would you be sad if you could bench less than you could yesterday? Yeah, in fact, I'm going to feel that in a few days when, well, I yeah, get when, my go wrist, back. when I get my wrist checked out and I go back, it's going to be weak. So the only real pain, real pain that you feel is not being better than who you were yesterday because you took a step backward. Because if you really think about it, suppose you're standing on a mountain. You're taking your steps up. This is an analogy we've used so much as life is like a mountain. You're climbing it. Now you look over. You see some guy running up and you're like, damn. Or you see a guy so far up, you're like, damn, he's so far. But in the end, just by staring at him, 
you haven't made any progress, but you haven't gone back. But now imagine if you're standing there, you see those people go by, you don't pay attention, but you slip and fall backwards. Now you're moving backwards in life. You're doing things that aren't moving towards your purpose. So it's a bigger fallacy to let yourself be worse than who you were the day before than to be worse than some other random guy whose journey doesn't connect to yours at all. That guy, whether he runs up at light speed or if he is as slow as a snail, you will move at whatever pace you choose. But if you let yourself be slower than you were yesterday or to move farther back than you were yesterday, you're now barring your own success. So instead, don't focus on what everybody else is doing. Just think about how you can keep moving forward because other people's success doesn't really influence your own. Those influences that you focus on, they're doing their own thing regardless of whether you succeed or not. Right? Just because I wish I, was, I had as much money as Elon Musk doesn't mean that that's gonna, that money's going to appear in my bank account. Right? What I look for isn't just going to appear. I have to chase it. So maybe you do see that guy running up. Now you can pick yourself up and start running with them. But don't be afraid because you didn't catch him. Don't feel sad because they got you there faster. Don't be sad because they end up at a higher place. Because that's not where you're destined to be. You're not destined to be on their path. You're destined to be on your own. That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. That was actually beautiful. Especially the story yeah. about the universities. And it's funny. I think it's just something that both of us do. Because you're not the only person who's a bit judgy when it comes to things. Yeah. Now, granted, I feel like we all make our own judgments about people. Which I don't think is necessarily a bad quality. But it can oftentimes affect our own view of that person and also the way we view the world. Our judgments are really how we see things. Those certain milestones, we assign value to it, right? So even me, when I see certain people getting into universities, I'm like, damn, For sometimes I, I say, I wish that was me. I wish I was at a better school, right? Or I wish that those people weren't so many leagues ahead of me. But then I also think, you know what? Being at the place I'm at led to me meeting the people I know now, which is a beautiful thing. I love the people I know now. I have so many good friends that I would have never known if I didn't go to the school I went to, if I didn't work at the job I worked at, if I didn't do what I do now. So to sit here and be upset that I'm not at the same place that somebody else is at is a crime because what I have is unique. What I have is beautiful. What I have is priceless. And with that, We'll start to end off this episode because it's time for, wait, no, it's your turn. You, you say it first. What? Quote? Yep. Quote of the week. Wow, that, that yeah. actually tripped me out. My brain just what? lagged for a minute. Yeah, I was there. like, why is bro, my brody not saying anything? I thought you were like asking me for confirmation. Like, is it no. time for quote of the week? No. I was like, huh? No. Anyways, quote of the week. This week, in fearing happiness won't last forever. We lose it. But in fearing that grief will last forever, we create it. Damn. And that quote is from Brianna Wiest. She's an author who wrote 101 essays that will change your life and also other books such as The Mountain Ooh. Is You. Wait. What? I want to tag a quote on. Go ahead. That I remember. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. But it was, uh, it's a story. And it was like, this kid is afraid of the boogeyman. Right? Or... Er, yeah, and then the advice is, like, he's scared of death, okay? Mm -hmm. And the advice is, if I am, then death is not. If death is, I am not. Why should I fear something that can only exist when I don't? And if, I, do you get it? If death is, I am not. If I am, death is not. Yeah, because if you're living, you're not dead. And if you're dead... You're not living. So think about it. You can only exist when death doesn't exist. And you can only, and death can only exist when you don't. Mm. So why are you afraid of something that doesn't exist until after you're gone? Damn. Pretty cool, right? That is and, actually and, Okay, cool. PSA warning. Don't kill yourself. Just so we're clear. Don't die. But <laughs> okay. don't be so afraid of it. Okay. Well, or don't be afraid of impending things. No, that's That true. will come at a further time. At some point in time. Yeah. And, you know, I definitely want to talk more about that. Eventually, we'll all be gone. But that's a topic for another day. Mm -hmm. As always, to wrap up this video, the main takeaways for you guys are, number one, 
understand that we feel sad because we either lose something or we don't get something we worked hard for. And number two, learn the different ways to deal with it. You can pick up a hobby, you can learn to see the beauty in what you have, or just focus on something more important to you. Find your purpose, your passion, chase it. And the biggest thing of all, wake up with a smile on your face. Understand that life might throw challenges at you, but at the end of the day, you are still alive. And I think that that is a beautiful thing. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode 17 of the Brighter Horizons podcast. Thank you so much for sticking around all the way. Be sure to, you know, check out when the books change. It'll be pretty cool. But make sure that you guys go out there. Be happy. Deal with your sadness by looking for the beautiful things. Make sure to find the missing pieces of your jigsaw puzzle of your soul. And make sure you live a positive life, y'all. Peace out.